This man has had his passport revoked. He's had his bank accounts frozen. He's had his social media censored. All of this for simply having a point of view that is deemed unacceptable uh, in Brazil. So please, let's welcome our, uh, our new friend here. I hope we have him on the line. I know we're uh, making this call internationally. Uh, Mr. Paulo Figueiredo. <laughs> Mr. Figueiredo, can you see me, hear me, sir? I can hear you and, and see you perfectly. If I if this call was international and I, uh, I was in Brazil, I would be in jail. I'm in South Florida, so this is a domestic call. <laughs> well, I apologize. I wanted it to seem more international because it makes us seem more cultured. Uh, but you, you still have an accent, so that's nice. It's not as severe as a lot of Brazilians. How did, how did that happen? Uh, I went to school here. Um, um, uh, I study here in uh, several schools, so, so and I've been here for 10 years. Otherwise, again, I would be in prison. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. That seems to be the rule there uh, in Brazil. A couple of questions before I ask you about uh, some of these details. What does uh, eso mean in Brazil? In jiu-jitsu, they would go, eso. It means, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And it, uh, and it should it should come to train jiu-jitsu here in South Florida and the Valenti brothers. You, they, they, they watch you, so okay. they should come here. And then what is a does is aye? They would say if someone gets it, they would go aye. What does that mean? It means again, that's good. Yeah, all right. Okay. And then what means you can't do that? That's chich poha. Yeah, that's a bad word. Is it a bad word? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, shit. It's like don't do that hey. shit. Don't take shit on my show. Don't we have children who watch, okay? <laughs> Maybe in Brazil, Carnival with butch and boob. It's okay. No here. We don't do here. Okay. Poha. <laughs> yes, that's exact. <laughs> Poha means something else. Oh, okay. it's, it, the translation is shit, but the technical term would be sperm. Okay. Oh. Poha means. <laughs> Whoa! Wait, sperm? Never, like, never show the two meat. Right, just never show the two. Wait, sperm? Like to spurn somebody? Or did you say sperm as in uh, ejaculate? No, the, the actual ejaculation fluid. No. <laughs> that's what Poha means. But in, in Rio, where I'm from, I'm from Rio, Brazil. That's where jiu-jitsu is, is, became popular. Um, and poha is, is like we say poha like Americans say the F word after after every sentence. Oh, so it, <laughs> yeah, that's not how that's not how we cuss. We don't say the F word after every sentence. The fuck we don't. Uh, I've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. We talk about sperm. There's there's with compliments means just many of you and only take one to get victory. So this <laughs> poha is compliments to me. Um, what is? Let me go through this. What's your specific relationship with? Uh, well, before I do that, where's the best place for people to find you and support you right now? Is it, since you're stateside, is it Rumble? The La Quinta Inn. In yeah, I'm still on. I'm on Rumble. Uh, I have a Rumble channel. My shows in Portuguese on Rumble, but the U.S. audience can follow me on X at Rio P Figueredo, which is my last name. I know it's hard to, to yes. follow. It. That's the way it is. Yeah. Uh, at Rio P Figueredo, I'm on on X, and I most of my posts are in English. So they can follow me there. The, my Rumble channel is still in Portuguese, although Rum, Rumble, as you properly said, is is ba not banned in Brazil. They decided to not comply to the rules, the crazy orders by Alexander de Moraes. And so they closed Rumble and Locals, by the way, as well. Uh, both both are closed to Brazilian audience. If yeah, you're want, accessing Brazilian IP, I wanted to ask you how do you how do you what are your thoughts on that? Because I know that obviously that's a significant portion of of your business, how you make a living. Um, but I would imagine that on on moral grounds, uh, you're supportive of them, you know, rebelling against the Brazilian government. But what's your overall feeling on that? That Brazilian fans can't watch you unless they maybe have a VPN. Well, it hurt me tremendously, uh, but I, I actually. Uh, talk to them uh, they, they were cursors enough to to let me know what they were going to do and i i fully support it uh because like elon musk said moral uh, principles mean uh, are more important than profit and 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 that was the basis all this started when i i tweeted to elon musk saying well you're saying all these rules are illegal so why comply locals and rumble didn't and that's when he said he was going to lift the, all the sanctions in brazil so i fully support it Although, uh, I, I think it's of course it hurts my business, right? Yeah, I, and I know, and I'm sorry to hear that. You know, may, hey, maybe there's a way that uh, Mug Club and what you're doing, uh, Mr. Figueroa, can pair. We can put a poll out there. Uh, we probably could use some some uh, Brazilian Portuguese people coming on over, giving them access to uh, to more content. Let me let me ask you this: What is your 
specific relationship with Justice uh, Moraes, because he is at the center of a lot of this, and the more I was doing research, it kept coming back to the same person. Well, he is the de facto dictator of Brazil. So um, I don't have a relationship with him other than I was a journalist on the mainstream media. Okay, I was on, on prime time. I uh, used to have the, sometimes more viewers than Fox News on prime time in the U.S. Mm. It's like I'm talking about millions of people watching every day on TV, regular cable TV, cable news TV. The, the show that I was uh, on was considered the number one political show in the country for a long time. So and one day uh, on December 30th, uh, 2022, so after the after Lula's election, the, I, I woke up with the order of um, cancellation of my Brazilian passport, which was unheard of. Um, the ban of all my social media in Brazil. You can access my social media if you're not in Brazil or if you're using a VPN, not in Brazil. Uh, my YouTube channel had a, like 1 million people, over 1 million people uh, there. Uh, my Twitter account, uh, 1.4 million people, just to give you an idea, and all other platforms. And one day I woke with everything blocked and plus all my assets in Brazil, all my assets and bank accounts were frozen. Plus he issued a fine every time I I, I stated any fake news, uh, which I, I think, I believe I've never did in my life, but right. depends on what you think right. fake news are. So that's that's my relationship with him. And I have been like that for a, a year and a half now. Well, and let me ask you this, because you said de facto dictator, Marais. Now, he's a Supreme Court judge. So the president there, former criminal, until the Supreme Court said, ah, we're not going to do that anymore, uh, Lula. Um, what's the relationship then between Marais and, and Lula? It sounds to me like you're saying he might be in a greater position of control than the president. Hmm. Oh, he definitely is. Uh, and and it's not me saying that, right? Elon Musk said that uh, he pretty much controls Lula. And it's interesting because uh, a few months ago, the Lula's party uh, uh, supported a bill in, in the U.S., in, in Brazilian Senate, saying that uh, giving some limitations to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court justices went nut, and they started... Uh, sending messages, WhatsApp messages, to journalists on mainstream media saying, look, we we allow this uh, him to go back to power. So he was like, he can't, he can't turn against us. We defend the democracy. We guarantee his election. So he they brag about it. <laughs> they brag about the fact that they brought him to power. So it's, and if you look at the Twitter files, Brazil, which they were released last week. Yep. It's undeniable that Demorais played a key role censoring conservative conservatives and therefore favoring Lula's election. Because, and even when when I was on TV, uh, I used to get orders from the court saying, "You can't say this. You can't say that. You can't say that." Like, and this is unheard of. Right. I couldn't say that Lula was unconvicted because this is this is a little. It's, it was just us being smart asses in a sense sure. uh, because he was convicted and then he was not find, found not guilty. He was right. unconvicted by the court. Right. I couldn't say he was an ally of uh, Venezuelan uh, dictatorship. Uh, I couldn't say he was an ally of the Nic uh, Nicaragua uh, dictator. So I couldn't say stuff like that on air by court orders. Wow. And we saw that that was happening in an even broader scale on all social media. Twitter was the one that we have access to the files, but it was happening on all social media. Can I ask you something? Because you um, you were uh, on, on television for a very long time. That means you were obviously broadcasting when Bolsonaro was in office. Um, and you've talked about these orders coming straight to you. Any of them ever come from Bolsonaro, the supposed fascist, saying you can't say that if you were critical of him or any of his colleagues ever? No, I actually uh, used to criticize Bolsonaro a lot. A lot of my viewers didn't like it, but I think it's part of my job. But I tried to be fair with him, which is uh, unique in the mainstream media. Like yeah. here in the U.S., you can criticize Donald Trump, but you don't need to lie about it. And uh, But the other journalists, I mean, the mainstream media in Brazil is not just as bad as in the U.S., it's way worse than in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So, And the amount of lies they spread against Bolsonaro is unbelievable. And most of them were prove, were proven fake news, right? F like f false yes. uh, uh, throughout the time. And Bolsonaro never did anything to them. It's like to the point that some people said he deserved to die 
just like we saw in the U.S. with Trump, the same thing in Brazil. We had mainstream newspapers with a like a column saying, well, I wish Bolsonaro was dead and stuff like that. And nothing happened to Jesus. no one. Right. And, and to be fair, and I have to be absolutely, I've been in this game for a long time, and I've been in this game before Bolsonaro and during the first uh, the first run of the Workers' Party, the Socialist Party, Lula and Dilma in power. And I criticized them heavily without fear. And right. now in Brazil, everyone is terrified. I mean, members of Congress, whatever is left on the press, even the, the more moderate uh, leftist journalists, they're terrified yeah. of criticizing uh, Demorize. Not Lula. We can criticize Lula. We cannot criticize Demorize or the Supreme Court. That's called an attack on the institutions, an attack on democracy and uh, spreading misinformation. And therefore, although there's nothing on the Brazilian law against that, uh, they, they can throw you in prison. And they have. Yeah. Well, it's really scary. I mean, it, you know, in South America, sort of, you know, coups happen all the time. It's just kind of pick a country and pick a span of five years. It doesn't matter if you're going to go Colombia this year, you're going to go Chile, you're going to go uh, Bolsonaro, you're going to go Brazil, or is what they would try and say. I know you guys had one in the 1960s, I believe, and I know there were sort of semi-coups since then. Um, that happens quite a bit. And Brazil is an interesting place because it seemed like it was going one direction. And like I said, I, I know a lot of Brazilians. Every single one of them was a very big Bolsonaro supporter. I knew one who wasn't, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, you may know him, was a, a, a journalist. And I would be curious to see his thoughts now because I asked him about Lula. I didn't ask him about uh, Marias. Um, let me ask you this. How does one, because there are 11 justices, right? If I'm not mistaken, they're on your Supreme Court in Brazil? There are 11. Correct. How does one person, one single justice, I mean, this is the reason that your passport was revoked. This is the reason that your bank accounts were frozen, that your social media, that you were deplatformed. This is the person involved with the Twitter files, right? It, it all goes back to Marias. How does one, going after that magazine, how does one justice, when there are 11, have that kind of unilateral power to get accounts removed and entire platforms? Well, he has a lot of support. And just so you know, it's very rare to see a judicial practitioner that's leftist. That's very rare. It's, it's very rare. Yes. <laughs> it's very rare. But you know why? It's, because uh, they're individuals. I know. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They it's, believe in personal strength and solving things. And it's it's... It's uh, it's very interesting, yeah. uh, but uh, that said, Morais has a lot of support, and he has support, global support. I mean, really global support, and uh, to the fact that the United States directly interfered on Brazilian elections, and this is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, theory that's on mainstream media that Joe Biden sent uh, the Secretary of Defense, the Director of CIA, the Advisor for International Affairs to Brazil to exert pressure on public officials, uh, including generals, including uh, uh, politicians, including bureaucrats, to not contest the electoral results uh, if, if Lula won. So, and, and Biden was the first one to, uh, to recognize Lula immediately after he won the election. Right. And, 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 that, and that's direct interference. And mm -hmm. We, we have reports on the, of that on, on mainstream media. It, it puzzles me. Actually, it doesn't, but I'll pretend it does. Yeah. That it puzzles me why, <laughs> why the Department of State is supporting a guy that's very anti-American. Because all Lula's policy was very – they were very anti-American. Sure. Uh, Lula is pro-Hamas. Lula is pro-China uh, pro like crazy. Mm -hmm. He is pro-Iran. Uh, we're, we've been docking Iranian warships in the Brazilian ports. He's pro Venezuela. He's pro pro the drug cartels in South America. He's like he's undermining the dollars on the BRICS. He's trying to make the the yuan uh, the the international currency for trades. Like why the do the Biden administration support that? It's almost like they hate America. Yes. It's all it's almost like it's the same party of people who supported Chavez. You know, it's almost <laughs> like it defies reason. Yeah, Nick, and, you have a question. And he said, if I'm following this right, Lula is is sort of uh, he's sort of behind the scenes controlling Marias. Marias is the one behind the scenes. He's a Supreme Court uh, justice. Oh, Lula okay. is the president. It was sort of the same dynamic I thought as yeah. Biden being controlled by yeah by the no. So, so Lula and his allies they appointed. Yeah. So the Marais was appointed by the vice president of Dilma Rousseff, which was the successor of Lula, of Lula's party. Uh, the vice president, Lula, Dilma was impeached for uh, fraud, defrauding public accounts, so she was impeached. 
And then this guy, Temer, which was more of a centrist guy, he took office and then he appointed uh, Morais. Uh, so if uh. you take of the out of 11, uh, nine were appointed by the left right. in Brazil. Wow. So and that's and that's that's why they can do whatever they want. Poor. And but they have a lot of support. They Poha. have support from the globalist community. He did. He said it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the- it's in English. You say with an H, yeah, like yeah. Poha. I'm from but Boston. I, I'm from Boston. I couldn't get that word right in a million years. No, that's that's right. You, he's you're from South South <laughs> Boston. It's, it's okay. Later Sound we like hold. Like Kennedy Poha. We're gonna hold together with the brothers Balanche. So um, nice. it's just it, it is rare, by the way. Like you talk about too with jujitsu guys. That's kind of the community. I think that's why we have a significant viewership in Brazil. We're going to start translating um, some of our content. To Portuguese, um, because uh, you know, obviously appearing on Joe Rogan and, and being involved to some degree in the, the mixed martial arts community, it's a very uh, it's a very strong sort of rugged individualist community, uh, and um, I, I, I see a real populist groundswell or have been for a while there with with Bolsonaro, and it's it, it was it was very surprising to me to see this shift, and it just made me very aware that it seems like it's a shift in spite of public sentiment, not as a pro- byproduct of it, and I see a lot of the similarities, you know, with what they, they they've done. They just accuse Bolsonaro and people on the right of being exactly what they are. They accuse him of being a fascist while they silence journalists and try and get people removed. They accuse him of not going, not being willing to relinquish power while they effectively appoint a shadow government, right? That's what they've done here in the United States. They've said Donald Trump is a fascist. Donald, Well, fascists don't typically lower your taxes and give you more access to firearms if you're a law-abiding citizen. But or they, arrest your political opponents. Right. Ex- well, exactly. That's what we see. Marias exactly guy has a black belt in corruption is what he's got. That's exactly what he is. Uh, a lot of similarities. And, yeah, I think a big reason that they would all hate America is because the idea of America would be the safeguards, checks, and balances to, to act as a stand against corruption. And, uh, of course, they want to destroy those checks and balances while demanding that people recognize and uh, respect the institutions that they falsely prop up. Education. They want to pack the court. Um let me ask you this because I want to continue uh, on Mug Club, which is, of course, powered by locals. Uh, let, you know what? Let's do that. Let's You guys follow on X, Real P Figurado. You can go and uh, follow him. Uh, what's what's your URL for, for for locals and Rumble? And we'll continue this on Mug Club. Uh, it's it's um, pfigurado.locals.com. And uh, Paulo Figurado, my name is on my channel on Rumble. And people can support me on locals if they think it's it's worth as well. Absolutely. My locals, locals are still honoring everything they're still uh sending all the supports just that brazilians can't access the, uh, through the website they can still do it through the app though yeah so i'm, I'm still there i'm still posting on locals i know but you know uh, what? look i appreciate you taking the risk because i i know i know that you take a hit and standing there saying yeah but morally um this is something that we have to do it's we, we've got to be taking a stand now rumble could have just removed you and a few brazilian creators right they had that option uh, either way, you're kind of up shit creek. I'm sorry, but uh, they decided to say, no, we're not going to comply. And hopefully we see more people emboldened uh, like we see with Elon Musk and X. Do you do uh, <laughs> jujitsu there, uh, Mr. Figueredo? I do. Yeah. OK. Uh, I've been doing civil since I was a kid and I started uh, going again on the Valenti Brothers here. These guys are amazing. You, sh- you really should come here. It's uh, what they have here. It's like a huge building, the beautiful man, like. Yeah. It's a state of the art. Everyone that comes here gets impressed. Well, you know, it's funny, though, when people talk about this, a lot of people don't realize because we hear Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but there are still more practitioners of judo in Brazil because it's an Olympic sport. Um, True. And you guys dominate in, in that sport. Um, it's one of the best countries in the world. So uh, it's just interesting, the sports that uh, people sometimes think, oh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I go, no, no, there are tons of people who do judo over there. And why do you think, why do you think it is? Okay, here's what I was going to ask you. Okay, the one guy who I know who is somewhat Lula, do you know Damian Maya? Sure, yeah. Damian yeah. trains here at Valenti Brothers. He was the one guy who, I, and I don't know him super well, like personally. He's the only guy who I knew oh, who was like. I call him. No, come on. So I, I actually trained with Damian uh, like a month ago. Okay. In a private class, me, him, and, and Pedro Valente. Uh, it's, he's, a, he's a great guy. I love Damian. Yeah. No, I, I've had, heard nothing but good things, but he was the one guy who gave an interview. And it was the only person who I'd heard saying like, oh, you know, it's a good, we actually, we need this change. And I thought, that's surprising. I'm, I'm as surprised as you were. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I misinterpreted it because I don't speak, I speak, well, I do speak Portuguese, but uh, uh, Portugal Portuguese. I just don't speak Brazilian Portuguese. So don't even try. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you, let me ask you this. No, but he's an un- really, really nice guy. And he was obviously a journalist. He went to school for journalism. Um, I don't know to what extent he's, he's done it. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, how did you get stateside if your passport was, were you already stateside, so it was, you couldn't go back? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I have, and this is another problem. I, I was always under U.S. jurisdiction, doing protected by the First Amendment theoretically, theoretically. So not under Demorize, uh, because I've, I've, I have this studio in my house. So I've been doing everything remotely from the U.S. I've been living here for ten years. Both of my daughters are American. Uh, I've been here for a long time. This is, uh, but 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 I have still, I have very deep roots in Brazil. Uh, my, my grandfather was the president of Brazil uh, from 1979 to 1985. Yeah. So my, his grandfather uh, was a congressman and he's all generals. So I, I'm very connected to Brazil. I still have business there, although I can't access my business anymore. Right. Uh, but it's still, I'm, I'm, I'm very, and I used to go to Brazil all the time. I used to spend months in Brazil, but I was here in the U.S. and when I saw things were, and it was in danger, I decided not to to go back. But I know for a fact from a source in the Brazilian Federal Police that the moment I step in Brazil, I'm detained. Yeah. There's, no, there's no arrest warrant a warrant against me, but there's an order on the federal police system that if I step in Brazil, I'll be immediately detained. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't surprise me. I've heard that might be the case with me in Canada, uh, but I don't know if it's true or not. But, you know, he is Fidel Castro's son. Hey, yes. Another Canada question... Is- very bad shape. Yeah, it really is. I have another question. Are all women in Brazil gorgeous? No, just just nine out of ten. Is that, okay, so one out of ten is still an ugly. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. The old ones, the old ones are not gorgeous. Oh, that's ages. After, Come on. After eighty-five, they're yes. Not exactly. After eighty-five, they're discarded. Um, so, uh, w- w- do you think? Here's the thing: the United States has some checks and balances. They're being eroded. Brazil doesn't have the same history, the same uh, you know constitution that we have here in the United States, like you talked about being protected by the First Amendment. Do you think there is a coming back from this uh, with Brazil, or do you think that right now they're accelerating so rapidly that it, it, it may be hard to correct? I'm actually concerned with the U.S. as well, because sure. I, I keep saying that uh, we have the same virus, we just have different immune systems. And the virus come from the Wuhan lab, uh, which in the United States, like Harvard uh, Law School, it's the Wuhan lab where they create the crazy ideas yes. and they spread throughout the world. And and the idea that's dominating Brazil is the same as in the U.S. Like everything that Demarize is doing that we saw in the Twitter files was now in Brazil is being done by the court, but in the U.S. was being done as well by the deep state. Sure. So. Uh, so in in Brazil, the Marais would issue an order saying you should shadow ban this hashtag because it's not interest to us. In the U.S., you had FBI agents asking that politely to the social media people, and they would gladly comply because most of them are leftists as well, of and course. they follow the same ideology. So it's the same thing. Uh, it's just different means. Right. So Brazil has a, another virus uh, that was also created in the U.S., which is called juristocracy. And that's very interesting because theoretically we do, we live in a democracy, which is the rule by the people, right? People people uh, elect representatives and they make the the, the decisions. In but that's very complicated. There, there it's tedious. There there are checks and balances. And let's say you want to I don't know pass a law legalizing uh, drugs. Okay, so you have two ways. In the traditional democracy, you just uh, you just have to elect uh, members of Congress, of the Senate, you need a majority, and you have the president, he needs to approve, and then you have the Supreme Court that oversees all that and right. decides if it's legal or, or not, right, the judicial review power. Uh, in a juristocracy, you don't have any of that. So the Supreme Court of Brazil is currently deciding if drugs are legal or not, although the law says it's illegal. They're saying, yeah, no, this law is not valid. So and they do that with uh, with anything. They're legalizing. Well, abortion was legalized in the U.S. by a court, right? Right. So, and this is very powerful. So the after the 2010s, when the national populist movement started, and you had uh, uh, Trump, you had Brexit, you had uh, in in Brazil Bolsonaro, you had Orban, you had you had this national populist movement around the world. Uh, the the elites they realized they it was going to be hard for them to win elections it, mm-hmm. it was it was becoming tough but they don't they didn't need to if they control the judiciary system 
they could do anything they want. And that's why George Soros in the U.S. is focusing more and more money to elect prosecutors and judges yeah, than to the candidates. Yep. And and it's it's fantastic because they all meet in Davos on the World Economic Forum and in these beautiful people meetings, and they just align their ideas. And that's why it's so similar. And if you control a bunch of people, just a, li- a few people, you can do whatever you want. There, there are no checks and balances. Right. And if you guys think you're too far away, if you had five justices on the U.S. Supreme Court, you would be having exactly the same problem, exactly the same problem. And you're having the same problem where in cities where the judiciary system is dominated by the left. Right. Well, we're, we're all watching what's happening in California. We're all watching what's happening in New York and, and so and so. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm, I am concerned with Brazil answering your question. I do think there's a there's a comeback for this. I think the first step is for people to be aware of the dictatorship that's ongoing in Brazil. Most people don't. Most, uh, the international community doesn't. Uh, I think if Trump gets elected, same way that Biden uh, uh, put his finger on the scale to Lula, so Lula could win, I think Trump could put his finger on the scale, not to, for Bolsonaro to win, which is not my concern, but to reestablish the individual rights and, and human rights yeah. in Brazil. I think he can help on that. He can exert a lot of influence because, as I said, Moraes is a very brave man. He has balls. I, I'll, I'll give him that. Right. He went further than anyone ever there, but he had he has support. And the movement and one of these strong supporters is Joe Biden and the, 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 the U.S. government. The moment he loses that support is going to be easier for the institutions in Brazil, whatever is left of them to get rid of him. And he's 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 going too far. He yeah. pushed. It's, it's, it's well, like that, that was going to be my, my question is, you know, people use the term populist. I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm a conservative, but now that sort of is seen as, as populist because it's become sort of a rebellion. My question was going to be culturally, you know, in the United States, the, the, the checks and balances as far as the American population, there is, even though a lot of people aren't aware, certainly the conservative side, the, the most valuable resources or weapons we have is awareness and that being matched with people having a, a pretty firm recognition of our constitutional rights, you know, human rights, these are birthrights, they're not rights granted by government. And people on the right are certainly involved and they're actively, that's what we try and do here, educate people on their rights. In Canada, people never understood that. In Canada, where I was right, people would willingly give up their rights. The parliamentary system is, it's, it's I mean, you can have someone win with 20 something percent of the vote. My question is, do the people of Brazil, do they have that like that's a part of American patriotism. Do you think that it can come from the ground up from the people of Brazil and an understanding of what their government should be, how it needs to be framed and their rights? Because abroad, I've not seen that in any other country. Well, it's it's very well put, not in the same intensity as in the U.S. Uh, but if you think about it, most of these uh, values that Americans have, they have um, they're rooted on the Christian beliefs right. that, that men uh, are created uh, equal and, uh, and we're, we hold similarities with our creators and therefore we have inalienable rights. And that's, and in Brazil, there's a big Christian uh, revival movement ongoing. Mm-hmm. And that's changing the way the Brazilian society uh, behaves. So that's, that's a, a big hope because uh, Brazil used to be a Catholic country and it was doing all right as a Catholic country. The, if you're a real Catholic and you go to church or go to mass, usually you have good moral values. Uh, but the problem is that since the 70s, well, Catholicism, Catholicism started dying a little bit all over the world, including Brazil. People were Catholic but not going to church anymore. The default Catholic. And then the default Catholic. And then you have the... Uh, uh, theology of liberation liberation uh, theology which was infiltrated by marxists yep. so that became very prominent in latin america and, and that's why the latin american countries have started to go um, yeah. in, a, in a bad direction uh and 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 right now brazil has a very strong christian movement yeah and and 70 percent of the evangelicals and and christians they vote for bolsonaro for example so they have this, these values that you're talking about that it's becoming and part of my job is to bring these values to brazil that's that's part of what i've been trying to do yeah no that's that that has to be the basis for it and it's interesting that you bring that up you know in quebec catholicism was and again like we've talked about there are different there are evangelical catholics especially here in the united states 
Quebec, Catholicism was the state denomination, effectively, right? Cath uh, the Catholic Church was entrenched with the government, and so what you always see is a rejection of that. They see it as overbearing. They see it as corrupt, just as they see their government. So in order to preserve Christian values, you have to have that separation. Anywhere that you see um, uh, Catholicism become the state, anywhere there's a state denomination, that's why we have the separate, when people talk about the First Amendment, what we're talking about is keeping the government out of the church running business. And I have noticed that. I've had quite a few friends who were sort of, to use the expression, you know, default Catholic, where they thought they were Christian, but they had never really been to church. You know, and if they did, they probably wore a thong because Brazil is a very sexually charged place, I noticed. Uh, and then a couple years later, they said, yeah, I went to a church and um, I, I didn't really know that's what I was missing. Uh, and I've seen that with at least half a dozen uh, Brazilians. And um, I, I didn't know that was happening on a statistically observable level across the country. That's that's really good to hear. Yeah, that's that's why, in a sense, I have more more hope in Brazil than in the U.S. because of the number of Christians in the U.S., I have been falling nonstop since the 90s. Yeah. And, and uh, to the point that you had 90% of the population in the U.S., the numbers are not exactly that, but 90% were Christians in the 90s. And and now you have like, I don't know, 55, 60%. So it's a drastic change. And if you look at the numbers, and I like I like the Breitbart uh, uh, doctrine, the, the idea that politics is downstream from culture. Yeah. But I think culture is downstream from religion. So you have religion, you have culture, and then you have politics. And the, the way to look at that is the most relevant demographic factor that changes the vote is if the person is religious or not. Right. In the U.S., there's a 26-point difference uh, if you're religious or not, if you vote uh, Democrat or not, for the left or not. Mm -hmm. So meaning... If the U.S. had the same religious demographics as it had in the 90s, probably Joe Biden would get 25 percent of votes and they would need to print out a lot of ballots to, get to, to win the election. Yes, I can imagine. Hey, tell, fill me in on this a little bit because I know about the election in Brazil, but I don't know the ins and outs as, as you would. Um, that election, a lot of people were, were upset about it. Here in the United States, you know, unfortunately, there were a lot of false conspiracy theories, like when people were talking about things that they couldn't prove with Dominion voting machines. But there were there were a bunch of ballots sent out to people who didn't live there anymore. Of course, we know that there were uh, registered voters without ID. We know that they violated their state constitution in Pennsylvania. All of these things would be enough to actually change the election, let alone the media interference in Brazil with that election. What is it that people were upset? What would be their argument? What corruption or what shenanigans took place that you would say were verifiable with that election. Was there fraud? Well, we can't say. Okay. And there's a, and that's an honest, honest answer. And I'm very skeptical. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm usually the last ones to believe in conspiracy theories, which has been proven like not good because most of them are, I know. are becoming... <laughs> Well, it's the difference. Uh, people say that the difference between between the a conspiracy theory and the the truth is uh, usually two weeks now, right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, like Alex Jones, you're sitting like, oh my god, we did infect them in Guatemala with gonorrhea, and Hillary Clinton did apologize for it. Jeez, he was right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, that's that's the way to say it. I, I I'm actually going to be on his show later today. Okay. Uh, I used to not believe Alex Jones like at all. I was like this guy's crazy, and now I'm like. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely crazy, yes. but he's, <laughs> but let's let's listen to what he has to say. Yeah, that's exactly uh, me. That's exactly my timeline. Yeah, I get it. So, uh, but uh, it's very hard to say. Brazil has some problems that are structural. So the first one is that uh, Br Democrats will love that, so they'll try to copy. So don't don't show this segment to the left. Right. Yeah. So Brazil has a has a fully centralized system. Every, everything is centralized in a supreme electoral court, superior electoral court, as you said, everything. And Brazil always had electoral courts, but during the last election, it was everything was centralized on the superior electoral court. Okay. And the president of the superior electoral court is Demorais. The composition is a bunch of justices from the Supreme Court, plus uh, some justices from the superior court. It's, it's, it's a bunch of bureaucrats, but the same guys that rule the country. And they hate Bolsonaro. They hate it. They hate him. But Demorais is like the enemy of uh, Bolsonaro. Okay. And I would love to have an enemy like Demorais, because if I was casting a movie... And wanted to cast a villain. Yeah, I would definitely pick him because yeah. he looks like Voldemort. He looks like Lex Luthor. He looks like uh, Megamind. Yeah, they did cast him. 
exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's a good good guy to have uh, as a villain. Yeah. But anyways, it's it's all centralized, all electronic. And uh, the good thing is that and Americans can try to copy that is everything happens on the same day and you're required to show proof of uh, ID. This okay. is, so, this is, so there's, there's this, some good. Yeah, there's some good, but it's fully centralized and fully electronic. So there's no paper trail. Mm -hmm. And Brazilian is passed, uh, so there's no way to audit it. So Brazilian is passed bills uh, two or three times in Congress uh, saying that the machines needed to have a receipt, the receipt would be put in a ballot box and would have a way to recount and audit the election. And that was passed in Congress twice. Mm -hmm. One, by popular initiative. So people sig uh, raised signatures and they delivered to Congress, Congress voted, they passed. So the Supreme Court, these same guys, they declared unconstitutional. So the law was never valid. So during 2021, so before the 2022 election, Congress got together and they decided to uh, vote on a bill to, to, uh, on a constitutional amendment, making the paper trail an, uh, like a right. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened was that the Supreme Court, and that's, that's public, the Supreme Court went to the to Congress, and I know it sounds weird, but they went to Congress and they lobbied for the bill to not get approved. And according to a few members of Congress, they issued threats that if something was, ha if, if the bill was approved and if they voted in favor of the bill, they would uh, they would suffer co the consequences in court, I mean, personally. Wow. So they were blackmailed. And that I have reports of that, uh, and reports from members of Congress. I don't have any proof of that because I, I don't know how I would have a proof of a blackmail. Right. So not, not, it's not like uh, Don Corleone uh, right. writes a paper, like, say, I'm going to make you an offer you can't receive. Yeah, like, here's so, the piano uh, wire from Demarius. Exactly. No, no, you don't have it. Uh, so I don't have that. But the problem is that a system that's fully electronic and centralized and cannot be audited, of course. there's no way to say that there was fraud, but they can't say fraud didn't happen as well. Right. So they say it's fully safe. Can you imagine? It's like uh, with all the the hacking that we know that happens in the world, people hack the Pentagon, people hack like the U.S. Uh, infrastructure, people hack anything that these machines are unhackable and completely protected from the Chinese, for example. Right. I, it's very hard to believe. Yeah. And I was very skeptical, as I said, until yeah. one day I watched, I received the document and I watched a, a presentation about our, uh, from an Argentinian guy showing all the discrepancies, mm -hmm. statistical and in the machines. For example, Brazil has two versions of the machines. One was audited. The other one, the older one was not. And Lula won by a big margin on the old machines that were not audited, and Bolsonaro won uh, in, in the other machines. So uh, statistically, if you study statistics, it shouldn't be a difference right. based on the ear model of the, the, the ballot machine. Right. Uh, but th there is. And right. I would love an explanation for that. But when I questioned it. <laughs> yeah, you got, well, you got ghosted happened. as a human being. Yeah. That's, uh, yes. so, so I guess what you're saying, again, kind of looking at South America is Pinochet wasn't all wrong. Well, he was wrong ab about throwing people uh, from, a from a helicopter, so that's not good. Well, see, I disagree. I disagree, <laughs> as long as it's the right person from the helicopter. No, we've been going through the worst dictators. It's hard to determine who is the right person. That, that's is, <laughs> that's, that is the wrinkle. I understand that. It's not lost on me, but I'm okay with it. No, we've, done, uh, we've been planning this for a while, the great dictator dictoff, where we have brackets of 16 dictators throughout history. And of course, Pinochet, you hear, uh, you hear echoed a lot. And the more I dove into it, I was like, okay, made up. There's some corruption, absolutely. A uh, bunch of mistakes. But I'm looking at it going, this death count, it's not even close to, example, Kim Jong-il or Pol Pot. Or even yeah. if you look at Chavez, um, none of it is even remotely close. But we hear more about Pinochet, for example, than we do about the Ayatollah, than we do about Kim Jong-il, than we do about Papa Doc in Haiti, than we do about uh, Chavez. I mean, there are so many uh, who we never know about. Half the people here in this country, I bet if you were to poll them, don't really know anything about Stalin or Mao. So well, they could probably tell you, oh, yeah, Pinochet was bad. And yes, yeah, I'm not supporting Pinochet, just like Hitler is bad. I'm just saying that understanding in South America, there was a period of time where your choice was a fascist or guerrilla communists. It's sort of a, a less severe version right now in Brazil, where it seems like people may feel, and this is where you may end up with, and I wonder if you think this is the case, a more, um, I don't want to say violent, but uh, 
more of an actual conflict as far as a revolution if people feel that there's a system where their voices cannot be heard. Are you concerned about that happening in Brazil, or do you see that happening in your lifetime? I think people are revolted, but Brazilians are, although we like jiu-jitsu and, and, and MMA and all that, I think Brazilians are, are not... Uh, it's not part of our culture to fight and 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 rise. Uh, Brazil didn't have a lot of that. I think Brazil is a country of accommodation. Mm. And when the system, uh, the establishment, I, I, my hope for Brazil is only that. I don't I don't hope Brazil becomes like the U.S. completely. It's a cultural change that will take a long time, and I've been and we have a lot of work to do. But what what I'm hoping is that the establishment realize that the Marais went too far, and this is becoming. Uh, too heavy. So Brazil is becoming a joke internationally. Um, we're going to have soon, we tried to have a hearing on the U.S. Congress. Um, uh, Congressman Chris Smith tried to hold a hearing. Let me guess, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. No. The Mac McGovern, the a Democrat from uh, from Massachusetts, uh, and he uh, he uh, he blocked the hearing. And we're going to have the hearing in, again in a, in a few weeks. Uh, but the Democrats are trying to, you know, put it on the rug. The New York Times, it's unbelievable what the mainstream media have, have been doing. They have not been covering this at all. You know, there's not a single piece about Elon Musk and what happened on the New York Times written by people that are in Brazil. I know. It's like the guy in Brazil, I call him the, you know, who Walter Durante is, is the guy who went the Pulitzer Prize for the New York Times for saying that everything was fine in the Soviet Union, doing the whole motor and all that. The New York Times is doing that. And, and he was a correspondent for the New York Times. Right. So the New York Times is doing the exact same thing in Brazil. It's going all Walter Durante as well, saying things are fine in Brazil. Nothing to look here, nothing to see here. And 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 my point being, I think right now, with all the awareness that's going Things are going to start to become harder for Marais, and the establishment will get rid of him yeah. to keep things more normal. Right, and maybe Brazil will go back to normal. And normal Brazil is not the U.S. Right, but it's way better than what we have right now. No, I understand. I think there could be there can be an exchange. We'll exchange some of our culture to Brazil, and uh, we grant immediate asylum to any Brazilian woman under the age of 85 who wants to come here to this country because those people will be the backbone of America. All right, Mr. Uh, Real P. Figueredo on X. I know if people here are watching on Locals, just go over and support him. I appreciate you taking the time, brother, and hopefully we can get you in studio, and, and uh, there are probably some areas where we can, we can team up here in the future. I would love to. I just can uh, see by my background, I got a lot of inspiration from you, right? It's, like, it's the same colors. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, and, and uh, you did it right because you must have gotten an LED sign because we had people who copied our set and didn't tell us, but they got an actual neon sign. And I won't say who it was, but they called us saying, how do you get your sign to not strobe? I'm like, you dip, you dumbass. Did you get a real neon sign? You can't put that on camera. So no. Uh, it looks, uh, and looks, you should come to train here, Jiu-Jitsu, uh, in South Florida. I'm looking forward. I would love to. I can't for two years. I still have the titanium rods in my chest. Oh, you still have it? Yeah, yeah. I take them out no, not this summer, but next Over there you can. Over there, trust me. Trust me. Over there you can. Well, my, they, <laughs> my doctors made me sign a waiver that uh, if they get bent, that they're not going to fix it. But I do want to come out there and see you guys. Mr. Figueredo, we must go. I appreciate it, brother. Be well. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.